can sit behind the screen and build great avatars for people. But at the end of the day, do people really know you from a standpoint where they really like you? And then once they like you, they really have to trust you to come in and take advantage of your services. And that doesn't always happen. It's, you know, I guess in this day and age, we would call it relationship marketing, right? Where you start to build kind of this relationship with people and then business ensues from it. And I think that that's kind of the magic formula to this whole like, you know, community involvement. You're listening to episode 165 of the Fitness Business Podcast. We'd like to thank this month's premier podcast partner, Tribe Team Training. Tribe helps club owners and managers increase their profits from small group training without all the headaches. To find out more, go to tribeteamtraining.com or click on the link in today's show notes. Welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining me. This week we're taking a detailed look at how you can grow your fitness business through fostering relationships with your local government and community. Our special guest this week is Michael Piercy, owner of The Lab in Fairfield, New Jersey. He's the recipient of the 2017 Idea Personal Trainer of the Year Award and has also been awarded the 2013 TRX Face Up Award for Overall Instructor of the Year. Michael represents brands including Under Armour, TRX, and Matrix Fitness as a master trainer. He's a former professional baseball player with three major league organizations, and he holds a master's degree in exercise science. This week's show is for those of you who are really trying to make an impact in your community, trying to grow your personal and your business brand, for those of you who truly want to impact lives and are willing to dedicate the time that it takes to establish strong and rewarding relationships. We take a deep dive into specific examples of what Michael has done to build his brand and drive leads to the business, plus he shares great advice on the steps to take to build connections in your own community. We're about to transition to this week's interview, but first I want to thank this month's premier podcast partner. Tribe Team Training is a proven turnkey standalone profit center for your fitness business. Find out more at tribeteamtraining.com or click on the link in today's show notes. It's my pleasure to share this week's interview with our special guest, Michael Piercy. Michael, welcome and thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you. This is awesome. It's an honor. I know you only interview the heavy hitters, so I feel like I'm, I feel, you know, privileged today. This is awesome. Well, look, I've wanted you on the show for a long time and I might just uh, remind everyone that, of course, you were the winner of the 2017 Idea Personal Trainer of the Year Award. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. And it's awesome to finally get on to the show. See, I've been skipped over so many times. It's like everybody else has been on the show. Other than <laughs> we got you on. We got you on. So I thought we should start off today because we're obviously going to talk a lot about um, developing relationships with local government and community organizations. But before we even go there, do you want to give everyone a bit of an overview about your business, The Lab? Okay. So The Lab is... <sighs> So where should I start? The lab is, we've been in business for probably almost six years. Well, we'll be in business six years on April 22nd. And it basically started, my background, I started off in big box gyms. And I remember being in big box gyms and kind of doing every single job. And as a trainer, I had people that would come in on a regular basis. And, you know, people spent a lot of money and they were there for a long time. They wanted to get better, both athletes and everyday athletes. And um, they weren't always treated the way I wanted, I thought that they should be treated. So I wanted to start a place that, you know, offered premium fitness services for people, um, a place for athletes to get better and also to use athletic based concepts from my background as a professional baseball player when I was doing that, kind of add those concepts and use some of those concepts in training. And then also have people, you know, be treated well from a customer service standpoint. So I started a lab probably six years ago and it's been great ever since and we just had the opportunity to move into a bigger space which is a 6,000 square foot space in Fairfield, New Jersey and you know that's where a lot of things that kind of some of the concepts that I'll talk about like that idea and different things from a community standpoint from a marketing standpoint working with community government different events in your community kind of stem from. 
So this new location that you've moved into, is that far from the original location? Five, probably not even five minutes, two minutes. Right. So you've been working in that same community for the full six years. Yeah, well, I've, to to be super honest, I've been in this same community probably, you know, over 10 years because the big box gym that I worked for, uh, which was New York Sports Club, and I worked with them for a long time as a fitness manager, fitness director, and did a lot of things. So I've been in the same community for a long, long time, been very familiar with the people, very familiar with local government, very familiar with a lot of different local businesses and things like that for quite some time. And Michael, do you think that we're going to see more of the lab opening up or are you sticking with the one facility? <laughs> you know, it's, it's easy. You want to think really big. I would love to be able to expand it. This first one was, you know what, when I first started is, is really, I, I wanted it to be a, a community place. I always thought like, great gyms in the area usually become almost like a community center for people, places for people to go, places for people to connect and things like that. And I would love to open more. I just want to make sure that it would always have the heart into it. So the thing is here, I have people in, I said this in, you know, the speech for the the award and things like that. I, I genuinely don't have one person that comes in that I don't love or one athlete that comes in that I don't love. And I don't ever want that to change. I want to be able to disseminate that. So I would hope to be able to expand that and be able to create something where you can get a culture like that. I just need to figure out how to bottle it up and, you know, take it to different places. So right now we got one. Hopefully maybe we'll get two at some point. But right now we're just having fun living life the way we're living it, Shanta. So let's talk a little bit more about that because it's obvious in the way that you speak and the language that you use that community is at the heart of your business. So how important has that been in actually developing the business, developing relationships with local government and community organisations? What role has that played in the progress of your business to bring it to where it is today? You know what is funny? If you look at kind of we're in like this microwave society right now where everything is kind of online. And um, if I look at the role of being in the community, it's it's kind of like it it can be and kind of be the heartbeat for your business a little bit because right now everybody believes that everything is online. So it's really easy to really get involved in just staying in that one space and doing Facebook ads, just doing Instagram posting, doing a bunch of things, and then kind of sitting in the office and not really getting out into the community. And I think that when you look at it, um, it's something that I even got sucked into for a little bit. I wanted, I got into the bigger facility and I felt like I wanted to get a little bit more reach because you got stress, you got more bills, you got more different things. And it's like, how can I reach more people? And I got out of doing this, the little small things and um, I kind of suffered from it from a little bit. And I think that it's super important that you go out and become, because if you look at the key ingredients of like, we'll say marketing or just building a culture. It's always no like and trust, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like people first, they got to know you. All right. And how do they get to know you? You know, we can sit behind the screen and build great avatars for people. But at the end of the day, do people really know you from a standpoint where they really like you? And then once they like you, they really have to trust you to come in and take advantage of your services. And that doesn't always happen. It's, you know, I guess in this day and age, we would call it relationship marketing, right? Mm -hmm. Where you start to build kind of this relationship with people and then business ensues from it. And I think that that's kind of the magic formula to this whole like, you know, community involvement. Do you reckon that you could share with us a specific example of what you've done with the lab to connect with your community and actually drive leads for your business? So if I could pick out one instance, I I think that it's one thing that I I did early on that's kind of been instrumental in building a little bit more of a a foothold in a community is I, I started participating in the St. Jude's Cancer Walk. And um, that just developed in like kind of doing warm ups before the walk. And it was a way for people to get to know my business, but also get to know me on a personal level from from seeing me every year. And then how many people go to the walks, you know, as an opportunity to get email addresses and different things. So something like that was was super instrumental in saying, hey, that these guys 
not only then I'm not just out saying, hey, we got this 1999 membership or we got this low cost membership or, hey, come in for this for this, you know, transformation challenge. It was all right. This is a person that's involved in the community that cares about, you know, doing great things for a great cause. And, you know, this is somebody that was fun and, I, you know, that it might be fun to go train there. Let me go see what they're about. And, you know, in in turn, it's like it's a chance for you to reach a lot of people in one, you know, grand event and on a bigger scale. So did you align yourself? Because I think you said you went a couple of times. Did you align yourself with that one event over a period of years? And that kind of made your brand familiar to the participants? What actually happened was if we start going back to like that first conversation about being involved in government, Mm -hmm. what happened is I got involved with actually the mayor where I'm from. So it's one of those examples of no like trust once again. So I I actually was able to meet the mayor of the town where I was at, which is the mayor of West Caldwell. And um, we had a couple different interactions. And this is something that I'm going to kind of elaborate on in my presentation and idea later on this year. And we had a couple different interactions. And in each interaction, it, it was great to meet and have, and he was a nice guy and it was great to have a lot of conversations. And, you know, I had offered, you know, training, you know, to come in or do whatever. And he's kind of a come in, do a tra- do the treadmill type of guy and some different things at the old place where I was. And um, in one particular instance, I remember we were talking and he was telling me about some of the events that they had going on in the city. Like, you know, maybe it had a 5K or maybe they had a marathon or maybe they had some other things like that. And I remember telling him a couple of times, hey, if you ever need anybody to come do a warm up or something like that, just just, you know, let me know I would come. And, you know, first time I think he kind of brushed it over and, you know, and then I, I would see him again and I say, hey, you know, remember, like, if you ever have any events, you know, I would love to come. And it's something that, you know, for me, I, I enjoy that. I like to go out and be with people and, you know, things like that. That's part of my personality, part of kind of like my core. And um, there was one particular night and I was inside of a shared facility, which was his, it was a shared tennis facility where he would come in and kind of do some stuff. And he was coming in to play tennis one night and he kind of popped into the office right after tennis. And I was in there doing some paperwork and he said, Hey, you doing anything right now? And I said, no, I'm not doing nothing. He was like, uh, well, get ready. Come on, come, come over with me. We're going to go to this dinner, you know? And at the dinner, came in. I'm like, great. This is just a great, it's a great free meal or whatever it is. And I'm like, Hey, this is cool. You know, I get to go. And then the dinner, he said, you know what? I want everybody to meet Mike. He's going to do our warm up for the St. Jude's cancer wall, you know? And so just intro- like that, just no, just like no that. warning. That's it. No warning, no warning. He introduced, he walked in, he had a hundred, hundreds of people or whatever the number was. And he just said, I want you guys to meet Mike Piercy. He's going to be, our, you know, he's, He's dutifully volunteered to do our our our, our uh, warm up for the cancer walk this year, you know. And then people came up and you know was they exchanged their information. It was a great networking thing for me, but it was it, it was just based off of the fact that I kept offering and just he would see me all the time. And it wasn't like I was asking him for something, which in his position I'm sure you know you you used to people coming up and saying, hey, I you can do this for me or can you do this for me? It was just from me making contact. And once again, it was just no light trust. So it was like, Hey, you know, and it ended up being an extremely successful event. And from there, the relationship I had with them and the people that ran the walk, there was in particular a lady there and her name's Terry. And every year she, her grandson had can't had terminal cancer. And he actually was able to get pretty fortunate and was able to beat it. So every year she's there with him and she requests every year that I do the walk. But every year what I do is I bring her up and she dances during the music, her and her friends. You know, while I do the warm up, they do the warm up, but they dance on stage. So it's part of the thing. But part of that was being part of the community, being welcomed in and then um, that acceptance basically is every year she requests that I be there to do that walk. So it's a chance to not only do something great for you and for your business and to be out there. And I got pictures posted, I think, on my social media that you can, um, you know that people can pull up. But it's a chance for you to 
get all those people out of there and associate them with your brand. And not only that, but forget your brand. It's just to say that, hey, this is a brand that cares about, you know, these causes, that cares about these things. And, and genuinely, you know, I do it because, it, you know, I, it's something that I care about. Kids, you know, kids are great and cancer is something that's taken a lot of people from me and my family that I love. And I think that it's a great cause, but it's a chance for you to expose your brand and help people understand that this is a brand that actually cares about people. That is such a beautiful story, Michael. Thank you for, for going into the detail of that because I think that's the true heart of it is, is that relationship early on that you built with, with the, the mayor of the local town. And I think what I take away from that is just how important it is to be consistent in your mm-hmm. approach and to be persistent you know, and not not sort of give up after someone doesn't take you up on an offer because obviously, as you said, it, it took a couple of turns for you to offer your your vol- or volunteer your assistance before he actually embraced it and took it on and then the journey went from there. I've actually got a couple of practical questions for our listeners who, who are thinking that sounds like something that they would like to try and do in their local community. What I'm wondering is once you have you've gone through that process, you've started to build that trust with members of the community. How do you physically take it from there to either, you mentioned collecting email addresses. How do you actually go from, hey, I'm, I'm here and I'm, I'm this brand and I'm representing the lab and I, I've built these relationships. So yes, you know, people might walk in the door because they've got that recognition. So that's one element. But how do you actually get email addresses from those people that participate so that you can then offer them a special membership or a trial? Well, one of the things is that I, that I was able to do there, there's always a DJ or something out there, you know, to create atmosphere and music like that. So I, one of the practical steps that I would say that I've been able to use is I've been able to give stuff away. You know, so for instance, a couple of years back, I was able to do a um, a men's health DVD and stuff like that. So in in that situation, you know, at, at something like that, I might be able to say, hey, I'm going to give away, you know, a DVD for anybody or they'll have a lot of giveaways because basically they're looking for con- contributable donations and things like that. But they want people to have a great time, too. So there's usually like some raffles or I'm giving away something for people that are participating in the walk. So it's nothing for you to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to throw something in there. And not even just a walk, you know what I mean? Are there tricky trays where you are, you know, that you could donate something and be able to say, hey, there's always schools looking to say, hey, can you offer something in our tricky tray? Or, you know, health events where you could do things. And then when you give away things, people have to put their names in there. And, and they have to put their names, email address, the information and stuff like that in there. And... In in kind, you know, you do the raffle or whatever, but it's a chance to expose yourself to those different people who enter into whatever it was to get your, you know, your DVD, your book, your, you know, free week, your two week pass or whatever you might have to offer. That's that's such a great example, Michael. And I want to take this opportunity to kind of, for anyone that hasn't checked out your social media presence or your website, or if they're not aware of what you do, one of the things that I think you just do phenomenally well is you've built your personal brand. Obviously you've built the business brand as well, but you have so much supporting material that you've created around what you do. So, you know, you just mentioned the DVD then, and I know you've contributed a lot of articles and that's another area that I think people can use to actually connect with, with the population is, is being able to contribute their knowledge in, in various articles. You've done a lot of podcasts and I do encourage everyone to jump on. I will put the links to Michael's social media pages in today's show notes that you guys can check it out. But I think, you know, you've done such a phenomenal job of building your brand, but also having consistency with your brand. You know, you have an incredible energy that comes out in all of your posts that you do. And I think that that probably really helps your connection with that local community and with your team. So congratulations on on everything that you do, because it's just phenomenal. And it's great to, to watch you. I actually have one more question. 
one more question because I like to make sure that the listeners have some really great practical takeaways. And I think that we've, we've already helped them with sharing that fantastic story, but can you give your top tips on how we can start to begin to build a relationship with our local government or community organizations? Okay. Uh, first one, I'd say attend city meetings, attend city meetings. Like if you have a local government, it's not going to be exciting. It's not sexy stuff, you know, but, you know, attending, you know, the city government meetings, you get a chance to meet the people who are in your government and then you get a chance to understand who it may not be the mayor. And then a lot of times it's not, you know, when I look at it, it's, it's a iffy thing. I just happen to be, but it could be, you know, so I don't want to set the bar that you have to be, you know, Hey, I have to have this relationship with the man, but it's having a relationship with the recreation director allows you to do some different things. For instance, you know, we, we have a turf field. Most of a lot of people look at the facility and say, you don't have turf. No, we have the use of a turf field, you know, be, so we don't need to, but that comes from relationships with different people in the city government. And, um, that, that changes things on another level. So attend the city meetings, then you know what's going on in the town, you know what kind of events, and there's always some things that you could be getting involved in to kind of get yourself in front of other people as opposed to kind of like trying to do everything through social media. The second one is like it's one of the old staples for everything, and it's always, you know, pretty much in sales circles. It's one of those old, tried, true methods of trying to get into the community, but join your chamber of commerce or become familiar with your chamber of commerce, you know, because usually sometimes you don't have to join. Sometimes there's usually a very consistent string of events with the chamber of commerce. So for instance, it just went to an event that we had here locally called the Taste of Essex, and it's all these different restaurants, but I couldn't really tell you right offhand how many people I was able to connect with just by being at that event. What it is, it's a round table of restaurants. Everybody loves to eat, have a good time. They like to have a glass of wine. So all of, you know, your definitely rep- representatives and different community events, I mean, different community organizations, a lot of, you know, the key holders are there having dinner or drinking wine, having talking different things, talking shop. So Chamber of Commerce is great. That'll open you up to speaking opportunities. Every so often I get a chance to speak for a different breakfast or you go in and maybe you can give your 10, you know, 15 minute speech on something that you are proficient at or something that you want people to know about your business. In addition to that, you get a chance to give your 30 second commercial, they like to call it, where I get to tell people about what we do. And you get to go there and and it's great to get face value in front of the other companies. And if I get a chance to expand a little bit on that, What it does is when you get a chance to go to some of these different events, don't look at it as an opportunity to try to make a sale for your business or look at it as an opportunity to or grab a card and things like that. What it does is for me, it, if I, it allows me to create maybe possibly a joint venture with a person. So if you look on some of my social media, we have fitness event coming up and it'll be, you know, some of my, I like to say partners because they're, we, we partner because our businesses complement each other. So it'll be something with the lab in conjunction with the joint chiropractor and uh, revived body and mind, which is cryotherapy, which is something that I would like for my people to partake in. But the businesses complement each other. Also, we have, you know, a nutrition uh, company that comes in too. So that's, it's just businesses that complement each other that we can work together to try to, you know, basically help each other by driving business to each other, you know, because the services complement each other. So that just comes from, you know, being in the community, seeing each other and talking to each other. And now all of a sudden, you know, it, there's something that we can do that might be mutually beneficial to not only just drive, you know, new people to our businesses, but also create more services and extensions of the business for my existing people. And then the last, I wouldn't be the last thing, it'd be hundreds of things, but all <laughs> be, be up to speed on events in your town. Like, you know, there's always a health fair, there's always a marathon, there's always something going on that you can get involved in. And, you know, the thing is to change kind of like, the, the difference for me in changing my engagement with my general community and community government is to realize that there's something that you have to offer. So if you go bearing gifts, kind of, or just to say, hey, saying, hey, this is what I, what can I offer? How can I help you? 
How can I help you? Changes, you know, that posture. And it allows people to say, you know what? It allows that moment that I had where a person says, you know what? I'm going to bring this guy in to do the warm up, you know, just because I'm saying, how can I help you? You know, the majority of the time, remember people in your government, people in event, they're, they're swamped with businesses asking for stuff all the time. So if you have a chance to say, hey, how can I help you? What can I offer you? In that specific case, it was, you know, a chance to offer, hey, you know, maybe the guy says, hey, I'll have somebody do a warm up and, you know, I don't have to pay him. So I'll get this guy. And he seems like he's OK. He seems like he's not a wild, crazy wackadoo. So, you know, I'll have him come do the warm up. And in that situation, I've benefited from it. So those would be a mouthful, but some tips. There's some really good tips. And, you know, as, as I'm sitting here listening to you, Michael, I'm thinking, I truly believe that you are one of the hardest working fitness professionals in our industry. And hearing you talk today about those initiatives and the way that you, the way that you approach your business, it just reinforces to me why you have had the success that you have and, uh, and you truly do care about, about the people in your business. And I love that ongoing message or that theme throughout our conversation, which really is it's not about putting that hardcore sales focus up front. It's actually about putting the needs of our community and our potential customers and our members first. And then once you, as you say, sort of build that, that like and that trust factor, that's when they become part of your, your membership or part of your business. So I want to thank you so much. I'm thrilled and I'm sorry it's taken us so long to get to <laughs> get you on the show. Um, but I just know that the information that you've shared today is going to be of a, immense value to so many of our listeners. So thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. And it, no, it's good. It's good to talk. And, and I think that I appreciate, I'm so honored to be on the show and I appreciate all your kind words. And I just thank you for having me. Once again, I want to thank Michael for sharing such great advice. After we finished recording, he also mentioned that as a result of the relationship he established with the mayor and the volunteer work that he's done, he's now been appointed as a special advisor to the mayor's office on health and fitness. What an incredible story. And again, such a great reminder about just what's possible with a little bit of patience, perseverance, and especially a genuine care for what you do. MyZone is a wearable technology platform that leverages personal goal setting, gamification, and social platforms to motivate your members. To find out more, go to myzone.org. You might recall in episode 163 that I shared the pre-core quick five five for Chris Roussos, the CEO of 24 Hour Fitness. Well, I hope to be able to bring you that interview next week. Before we finish off today, a reminder that all the resources, the links, and the transcript for today's show can be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Thank you to our founding partner, Active Management. They have an amazing gift for everyone. Their number one selling checklist is yours totally free. It will turn your About Us page on your website into a lead generating page. All you need to do is go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash active for the free download. Thank you so much for joining me for another week of the show. I look forward to seeing you next week. And remember, what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. Thank you.